This episode starts with Twilight being instructed to read a bunch of books, which are clearly going to take up a lot of her time. With that thought, she gives Spike the rest of the day off. So as Spike goes over a long list of things that he has to do, which takes up about 5 seconds. And there's something strange about the background in this scene. Fluttershy makes a cameo drawing your eyes back there, but seconds later, there is no one anywhere in the background. It's not really a criticism, it's just something kind of odd. Looking for something to do, Spike notices a hot air balloon. He runs towards it and bumps into a pole, causing it to become unraveled. That's an accident that I can buy, unlike some of the other things we'll be dealing with later in the episode. Spike chases the balloon through Ponyville and eventually manages to catch it, only to find out that he's ended up in the Everfree Forest. Out of the wilderness pops the Timberwolves, and yes, they are animated in CG. I don't know why, and I don't know if they were in Family Appreciation Day, but yes, the CG animation is quite impressive. It just doesn't seem to have much of a point. Spike runs off but gets backed into a corner. Breathe fire. Breathe fire. In the last episode, we clearly saw that he had the ability to set wood on fire. When Spike doesn't do the painfully obvious, he gets saved by Applejack. She manages to distract and destroy the Timberwolves. Spike begins fanboying over Applejack and realizes that she saved his life. Uh, why were you out here? Saw the balloon floating by with no pony in it. Came out here to investigate. That's a good enough explanation for me. They take the balloon back and head out of the Everfree Forest. Meanwhile, we see that the Timberwolves actually have regeneration powers. It's a good thing too, or else I would call them the crappiest threat I've ever seen. Applejack tells Spike that she has chores to do, and so Spike offers to do them for her, saying that he needs to repay the favor. Yes, this plot is cliche as all hell, but if they can do it better than it's usually done, I won't hold it against them. So Spike is instructed to help Apple Bloom wash a pig, but he knocks over a bucket as he starts to wash it. That's another little accident that could happen to anyone. They finish washing the pig, and Apple Bloom wanders off, and Spike says that they're still not even. Eventually, Applejack lets Spike help bake pies, and he sucks at it. Wait, what? And my freshly baked homemade triple decker nut crazy vanilla cream cookies! Oh, wow! These cookies are delish! Spike made them. Spike can cook. Remember, Meriwether? You even had him cook in Dragon Quest. Gray Smith asked Spike to get the eggs and he accidentally drops them on the floor. That's another accident I can buy, but unfortunately his next accident is one that I cannot. He starts trying to clean up. You know what he usually does for Twilight? But manages to screw it up. Badly. Applejack tries to get him to leave, but Spike can't. He reveals something called the Spike the Dragon Code. If someone saved his life, he must repay the favor in order to be a noble dragon. Let's bring up Dragon Quest, the last Meriwether Spike episode, where Spike learned that all dragons were assholes and he should be ashamed for being one. I can believe that this is an attempt to prove that he's not like one of those typical monstrous dragons. He clearly made the Spike the Dragon Code up. That being said, I probably would like this a lot more if he farted the card up instead of belching it. You know, as a subtle wink to the audience that yes, he is pulling this out of his ass. Granny Smith talks to Spike and reminds him that he's Twilight's assistant, and with no hesitation, Spike decides that he has to break the news to her. And by the way, this is the moment that killed this episode for me. Big time. The Crystal Empire revealed that not being needed by Twilight was his biggest fear, and he seemed horribly shooken by it. A fear that will never come to pass. Now here, he's willing to shrug it off with no hesitation, or very little hesitation. He makes it sound like it's as simple as a breakup. Twilight is way too distracted by her reading in order to address Spike, so he thinks that she's understanding when he says that he needs to be Applejack's servant for life. This brings me to the strange part of this episode. Everyone is perfectly in character, except for Spike himself, or when they want to further this dumbass plot. I mean, usually when an episode gets someone out of character, it's not the focus character, but that's the only character who's out of character in this episode. Once again, unless they want to further the plot. Yeah, I don't buy it. Maybe if Spike was thoroughly crushed by this, and not just reluctantly leaving. Spike comes back to Applejack, and immediately starts screwing things up once again. You know, the cleaning that he usually does for Twilight. Applejack tries to talk Spike out of this, and that just hammers my point in further. If they reduced Spike's role, and made Applejack more prominent, this might have been the best Applejack episode to date, instead of what's becoming one of the worst Spike episodes to date. Eventually, Spike manages to convince Applejack to let him serve her, so she goes looking for a chore that he won't screw up and she notices the excuse of the pie that he made, and commands him to take it to Rarity. I suppose now is a good time to bring up this episode's original plot, where Spike was Rarity's servant instead. It would actually make Spike's behavior and devotion a lot more clear, since he has a crush on her, and that would most likely distract him. However, the idea was changed because Rarity came off too mean, and, uh, all things considered, I'm conflicted. I'd love to see the original draft for this episode out of morbid curiosity to see if we just really traded one train wreck for another. And in order to humor Spike, she eats a piece of it. 
You know, that's funny and heartwarming enough to earn a point, I guess. Unfortunately, this particular moment makes an even stronger case for the original draft, where Rarity would be willing to do things like this until she just couldn't take it anymore. Spike takes the plate into the kitchen, per Applejack's command, and Applejack lets it out that Spike is her servant for life. Rarity likes the idea. Yes, this could seem excessively cruel, but I'm willing to let it slide since she is just fantasizing. Spike screws up washing the dishes. That was quick. Rainbow Dash swoops up to the window, and also seems to like the idea of having a servant. That's an odd suggestion. You know, a lot of people accuse Season 3 of being fan pandering, but I didn't really buy it, you know, until they literally started writing our fanfics for us. But seriously, that was actually pretty funny. Rainbow suggested Spike should do something really, really hard, which would presumably get him to give up. And her suggestion is to build a rock tower. And he actually builds the rock tower. And Rainbow's forced to knock it down. Which, yes, is funny. There's definitely some Polsky shining through in this episode. Fluttershy wanders by and says that she just tell him that she didn't have anything to do. Why didn't I think of that? You did, and he didn't buy it. That doesn't stop Applejack from using the suggestion. So Spike himself starts thinking of things he can help Applejack with, like breathing. Applejack goes to find Twilight, with Spike distracted by counting blades of grass, and gets her attention by moving one of her inkwells. It's funny, but unfortunately, this next bit of stupidity overshadows it. Twilight not only knows about the dragon code that looks like it was drawn in crayon, but she fully supports it. First of all, whatever happened to not knowing anything about dragons? <laughs> Secondly, like I said, everyone is perfectly in character, unless they want to keep this dumbass plot going. Oh, by the way, guess how they're going to free Spike from his life debt? Just guess. It's the most cliched, obvious solution imaginable. They're going to have Spike save Applejack's life. So Applejack goes over the plans to the rest of the main six. And Pinky has a suggestion that is definitely worth a point. The actual plan involves Applejack getting attacked by a Timberwolf. Sure, why not? Before they can go with it, Rarity starts teaching Applejack how to be a damsel in distress. Please tell me again why this wasn't the Season 3 Rarity episode. So they get to work on the plan. Rainbow Dash roars out a Timberwolf call, which seems to actually alert some Timberwolves. Rarity and Pinky run from the forest screaming about Timberwolves. Pinky doesn't seem to care whatsoever, but Rarity is extremely melodramatic about it. Twilight uses her magic to levitate. Okay, if Spike gets fooled by that thing, then I am going to be royally pissed. You're not. You're really not going there. If this works, so help me God. Wait, what? They're not really going there. You know what? I don't care, I'll take it! And then some real Timberwolves appear and chase both Applejack and Spike. And Applejack smashes them with a rock, but she falls and gets stuck for real. Then the Timberwolves begin to regenerate and come together to create this huge ferocious thing. Spike simply throws a rock into its gullet and it breaks apart. I know that it's at least trying to be funny, but it comes across as an anti-climax. And it makes me wonder why the hell the Timberwolves have the power to come together if they can get killed so easily and then stop respawning because of it. Spike saves Applejack and the two of them run off. And now the two of them are equal. So Applejack then explains the moral to Spike. Actually, explaining the moral to the character who should have learned it is the worst way to get it across. Thanks, Spike. Happy to help. Don't know what I'd do without you. You know that phrase, so close and yet so far? I think it sums up Spike at your service perfectly. Everything about this episode is perfect, except what the episode is about. Every character is in character, except the focus character. The jokes are funny, except when they come at the expense of character derailment, and they often do. A lot of people seem to love this episode, and a lot of others seem to hate it, and I can honestly see both sides of the coin. There's plenty to hate here with Spike being a complete idiot all the way through. Even the people who like the episode would probably admit that. How much you like the episode depends on how distracting you find that. There's also a lot to like, though, considering that this is probably the best Applejack episode since Applebuck season. Unfortunately, it's not an Applejack episode. It's a Spike episode. Collaborations very rarely work, and it's clear that Polsky and Meriwether's writing styles and artistic visions don't coincide. Polsky is all about having lighthearted episodes, and Meriwether is about having more grown-up, mean-spirited scenarios. Whatever the case, this is definitely better than Meriwether's last collaboration. I'll say that much.